Good morning. Welcome to all of you here and all of you joining online. If you turn your bulletin to the back cover, you see that we have a lot going on. You can sign up using the Grace Connect code for a hike this Saturday in the Foothills Park. You can sign up for our Monday Thursday Ethiopian dinner at 6.15. And I appreciate an RSVP. If you didn't RSVP and that evening you are like, oh, I really want to go, please come. There will be a seat for you at the table. You can also sign up if you want to help with uh, worship assisting tasks like ushering or reading or um, serving communion. And you can also um, support us with a donation for Easter flowers if you want to. All those things can be found under the Grace Connect QR code. I already said Easter out loud, so it's coming up. Next Sunday, we're at Palm Sunday. Between the services, we have our Palm Sunday Festival with lots of things to do for any age groups. And then on Monday, Thursday, the dinner, and at 7.30, we have our um, Monday, Thursday service. On Good Friday, we have two services, at noon and at 7.30. And the Easter Vigil, sunset, conveniently, is at 7.30. And we have a lot to offer that evening, next to fire and a lot of storytelling. We will have Bishop Jeff Johnson visit us, and we'll have a baptism. And after the service, we'll have champagne and some more. So what can you want more on that evening? On Easter Sunday, between the services, there is an Easter egg hunt for the younger ones, I'm sorry, but Easter breakfast for anyone. Please stand as you're able. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who brings us safely through the sea, who gives us water from the rock, who leads us into the land of milk and honey. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <laughs> For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness. For longing to have what is not ours and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves. For misuse of human relationships and for unwillingness to see the image of God in others. For jealousies that divide families and nations and for rivalries that create strife and warfare. for reluctance in sharing the gifts of God, and for carelessness with the fruits of creation. <clears throat> for hurtful words that condemn, and for angry deeds that harm.
for idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, 
from the least of them to the greatest, said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. steadfast love. In your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Create So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the young folks to come down. It's called an oak tree. Isn't that cool? What do you think? You think if we dug up this tree, we would still find this acorn underneath? You do? Or would we find roots? Yeah, we would find roots. So the acorn has to get planted and go away for there to become a tree, right? Yeah, what happens when you plant other seeds? You plant the seed and the seed goes away, right? And then the plant comes up. And if you dug up under the plant, you would only find roots. You would not find the seed, right? The seed goes away. Pretty cool. And did you know that Jesus talks about this? Jesus talked about a wheat seed. And you plant the wheat seed, and the seed dies so that a wheat plant can come up. But then with a wheat plant, do you know what you make? Bread. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, you make bread and all kinds of other things with that. So that seed has to die so that it becomes something else, like a big tree or like a wheat plant. And Jesus told this story because Jesus was really smart, and Jesus knew that Jesus was going to die, but that Jesus would come back and be something even better, someone that is with us all the time, right? Right? And Jesus knew that when he died, he would come back again, just like those little seeds that die so that they become something else. Is that good news, do you think? Yeah, I think it's good news. Let's say a prayer. God, we thank you for 
the story of your life and the stories that you told us to help us understand your life. And we thank you for giving us the example of the seeds that have to die so that they could rise again and become something wonderful. And we thank you for doing that with your life. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Let's go back. The last couple of days, we've had a little bit of a trip down memory lane in some fashion from Ariel and I. On Friday, we went down to Thousand Oaks to Ascension Lutheran Church, which is one of our bigger congregations in California, uh, to celebrate the ordination of a dear longtime friend of ours, a classmate of ours, a roommate uh, uh, from our Cal Lutheran years who we worked at camp with and have kept in close touch over the years. And it was a big celebration. And so whenever we go down to Thousand Oaks, we always have to wander around the campus at Cal Lutheran a little bit, see what's new, see what's there. The chapel is never locked, so we wandered in there. We were one of the first weddings uh, in the chapel at Cal Lutheran when it was constructed, and super fun to see the, the artwork up front, the, the cross, the figure on the wall, the altar, was done by Ernst Schwitter, an artist on faculty at Pacific Lutheran University, and if that name rings a bell to you, he did a lot of churches, and so it's kind of fun to see these connections as we go places. But it reminds me, particularly in the ordination as well, something that I've experienced. This is, these are steps in a journey. And in the gospel text for today, we hear a story that I'll, I'll kind of use a, what I would argue is a right word, but maybe doesn't feel like the right word at first. And that word is adventure. Sometimes adventures are fabulous and fun and exciting, and sometimes adventures are, are not that, right? They can be difficult and dark and painful. And many times in our lives, we see different chapters and different adventures that have different components to them. Sometimes we can plan for adventures. Other times, uh, there's not a lot of planning. The adventure is thrust upon us. When we got married, that was a new adventure. We moved to Ohio, had White Castle once, and then moved on to next steps in the process. We're uh, drafted in the assignment process to a really cold but awesome part of the United States to begin serving. But one of the things that was part of that adventure was the arrival of our first child, Eli. And you know, these kind of adventures, there's a certain amount of things that you can read, which to be fair, Marielle did a lot more reading on this subject than I did. But uh, what to expect when you're expecting, there are all kinds of things to read through this. We were very excited about this whole new chapter, new state, new church, new job, new child, all of this happening. And Marielle was reading an article in preparation for the birth of Eli that was entitled, how to Find Dr. Wright. And it was an article about how to find a pediatrician. So once your child is born, how to uh, sort through the priorities of what's important in finding this doctor. Well, now, Eli showed up at the expected time on some level, uh, but had an opportunity to fly down to Minneapolis ahead of us as he was wrestling with his congenital heart defects at the time. And it was all of a sudden an adventure that we thought would go one way had suddenly taken a very hard, sharp turn right out of the gate. And we ended up heading down to Minneapolis to meet our child who was already there ahead of us, which felt strange. Uh, the book seemed to suggest the child goes with you, but nonetheless, there he was. We were sitting in a room waiting to meet his cardiologist, and he walked in and said, Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Wright. He said, Of course you are. <laughs> of course you are. A man who told us later, as we were getting ready to move back to California, that he had in his whole practice four birthdays memorized from his patients, and Eli's was one of those, which gives you a sense of the frequent flyers we were at uh, Minneapolis Children's Hospital. 
But adventures are fun, but can sometimes be scary and can be challenging. And sometimes we have times to prepare for them. And sometimes that even helps. But not all the time either, right? But the book said it would be like this. Sometimes we don't plan. Sometimes we don't get a chance to plan. In the gospel text that we have today, we have a very dark story. The Greeks come to Jesus, speak to his disciples, and say, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. I had a professor in seminary who said that at his internship site, those words were printed in the pulpit so that when a pastor arrived to preach the sermon, in the days when it would be, Sir, <laughs> Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Now, the story that follows is not the ones that the disciples would want. The disciples have been having quite the adventure. They would go places. Jesus would heal people. He would feed people. He would be a hero. Everybody loved it. And to be close to Jesus, there was a lot of all kinds of good stuff that was happening. But suddenly, Jesus starts talking about the way in which he's going to die. They've begun to approach Jerusalem. As we know, we're, what, two Sundays out from Easter here and the adventures of Holy Week, recognizing that not all the adventures are ones that we would choose. Remember those great books? Choose your own adventure. Most of the time, the adventures are not ones that we choose. They're ones that are provided for us in this life. Jesus is discussing how he's going to die, and his disciples don't like the language, the sense that we should be following God, and this shouldn't have to require this kind of path. If we do the right things, we skip the hard adventures, right? In the Old Testament text, we have this sense that God is going to be in relationship with God's people in a different way. No longer shall you teach one another. I've got this great book for you. After you've read volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, let's talk more. But instead, it will be written on their hearts, right? There is a profound sense that as we gather as people of faith in this community together, it is a journey in this life with adventures along the way, importantly, that is not done alone. When we gather and hear the words of the gospel, we recognize that we hear the story of Christ. We hear the adventures of Jesus, the ones that are fun and the ones that are not fun, the ones that are dark and hard, the adventures that go through death to life, all of the adventures. Now, we can approach Holy Week with the idea that these adventures that Jesus had are a great story for us to remember. But I'd say it's a little step further. I know in the adult forum today, the discussion was on the sacraments. And when we enter the church by way of baptism, that water binds us to the story of Christ a story that is in mission for the world, that we might serve others who are hurting, that we might live in community such that the adventures of this life are something that we celebrate together and that we hold up one another when they're ones that aren't the kind that we celebrate. But most importantly, that in the story and water of baptism, we are tied to Christ in a way that reminds us that through death to new life, Christ's story is in fact our story. As you approach Easter and we begin to hear about these adventures of Jesus that are so familiar to us, that are hard stories to tell, to understand, to wrap our heads around, be mindful 
I would say in particular that these stories and adventures are not just those of Christ. They are our story as well. Amen. Please stand as you're able. our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. For writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Lord, in your mercy. 
For the earth, with its, with its extravagant beauty, we give you thanks. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things and move us to support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Lord, in your mercy. For those who challenge oppression and expose corruption, support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Lord, in your mercy. For fair wages and sustainable employment, especially for those who are marginalized, exploited, underpaid, and underemployed, and for all those seeking employment. Lord, in your mercy. For any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships, for those who are ill or hurting in any way, and for all those we name in our hearts or out loud now. Lord, in your mercy. For the saints whose faith inspires us, we give you thanks. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace.
Please stand as you're able. Righteous God, when the hour came for your son to be glorified, he sat down with his disciples and reenacted the story of your liberating purpose for your people. We gather as your disciples to reenact your liberating purpose in the death and resurrection of your son. Come among us now that others may see you in us and we may behold your glory as these gifts of bread and wine become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the, night in, we, in, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Heavenly God, you have glorified your name. Bring all who would see you face to face with your son in the power of the Holy Spirit until all injustice is transformed by your mercy, all deceit healed by your truth, and all oppression dismantled by your grace, until your kingdom is known on earth, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
may be seated as we sing, and I invite the communion assistants to come forward. You don't have to bring a glass from the tray. Just come up. Body of Christ. As you come forward to receive communion, please take a glass from the tray on the front pew. You will then receive the bread. We also have gluten-free bread. The first assistants on either side have wine, the second grape juice. If you want to receive a blessing, please come forward with your arms crossed. All is ready. All are welcome.
Please stand as we Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our arms the making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. For Jesus Christ, our Savior and God. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, share your bread.